Hi, this is Satima Fowler, CEO of Capstone, and I'm here today with Angela Lake of CEO of Midnight Janitorial. And the reason I wanted to interview Angela today is because this lady has done a tremendous job of marketing and gaining visibility for our company without spending a fortune. And if you are an entrepreneur who has very limited to none uh, marketing dollars or advertising funds, then you want to pay a special attention because she is about to share with us some tricks and tips on how to market your company and gain visibility without spending a fortune. So welcome, Angela. Thank you. Now, Angela, I know, uh, while I was doing research on you, I know you wrote a book called Wisdom in a Traffic Jam, and there was a particular topic that was of interest to me, business ethics action items that earn sales. Can you expand on that? Yeah, in 2008, I was flipping through the Rochester Business Journal, and I saw an article about the Ethics Award that was coming up, and I thought to myself, hmm, I think we're ethical, let's apply for this. So after we did, you had to go through this whole process of who you are and what your business stands for. So as we were doing that, we actually won the 2009, we were finalists for 2009, we won 2010, and we went to the National for 2011. So it was a very big experience for us, and through it we learned that ethics is really important in Rochester. People want to know where you're coming from, what you stand for. And our biggest thing was not cheating our clients, that we really wanted to give them a service that we provide, but in a timely fashion. So when we were going out and telling people that we won this ethics award, they were really interested in hearing about our story. So that has helped you in closing sales, yes. so it gives you credibility. That's exactly what it is, it's credibility. When you're up against in anything, an interview, a sale, they're gonna compare apples to apples. What makes you different? And for us, it was winning the Ethics Award. It was saying that we were nationally recognized as an ethical company. Kind of says it right there, you don't have to sell after that. They exactly. want, especially in the cleaning field, Unfortunately, we're not known for ethics. That's perfect. So is there, is there like, does your business have to be a certain size before you think about applying for ethics award? No, actually Jerry from Show and Auto Place, he only has five employees and he won in 2012. Wow. So anybody okay. can apply. It's a really good process, even if you don't win, to just go and go through the questions, what do you do, what makes you ethical, makes you think about What's your strengths? What's your weaknesses? And how can you fix them? Perfect, perfect. Now, um, I know there's more than that that you're doing. What are some of the marketing campaigns that you do that's really working for you? One of the things is I say if you're going to do anything, don't do it once. That's not going to work. You can't do it one time and think, okay, I'm going to be successful. It has to be continual. So for me, I do a lot of blogging for the DNC. And I really love doing the writing. That's kind of my secret passion. I write for the Rochester Women's Magazine. So I'm always getting exposure. Whenever anybody asks me to be a part of something, I willingly do it whether I know what I'm doing or not. I'm willing to try and help out. I think that you really have to be consistent. You can pay for advertising, and that's great. But if you're only going to do it once, don't do it. You have to do it consistently. If you're going to do a blog, don't do it one time and think, OK, I'm done. Don't set yourself up for failure. If you're going to blog, for example, and you say, okay, I'm going to do it once a week, then stick to once a week. That's fine. You don't have to do it 10 times a day. I do once a week, I'm good. But I set my clients up or my readers up to know that it's going to be once a week. They come to expect it. I used to know a friend named Karen Marley who wrote a really great blog. And she would even, it's like an e-zine. One day, she didn't do it. And I hadn't realized how I came through blog to read that e-zine. And I was like, Karen, where's your design? <laughs> That's wonderful. And she's like, oh, I was just sick this week and I didn't do it. But people come to expect that stuff. They like to see what you have to offer. A lot of good things you can do is apply for awards. I always say that people, when you apply, even if you don't win, if you're a finalist, you're still getting publicity. People still get to read about you. Another good thing is to sponsor an event. People forget about the AIDS walk or the breast cancer walk. Well, those sponsors get put on t-shirts. Well, who do you, what do you read? You wear those t-shirts all the time and you see that company's name, it triggers something. Another great thing you can do is put a sign in your car. People neglect to do that, but 
people are driving by, they see that sign, they think, oh, midnight, we don't call corners, we clean them. Let me call them. Oftentimes, I've heard people say, I saw your car, and I remember, I remember to call you. Oh, those are some awesome tips. Now, you talked about the sponsorships, and, and can that get expensive, though, when you're sponsoring different events? It can. So pick one that's near and dear to you. Pick one that you love. Like, I'm a big advocate for junior achievement. That's where I think I kind of got my start when I was in high school. We actually ran businesses, and we sold teddy bears. <laughs> we were terrible, but we were like 15 years old. What did we know? So now I get back to Junior Achievement and then I go into the schools and I teach Junior Achievement to kids. Okay. So their newsletter, I actually got featured in their newsletter at one point because my kids sold candy bags or something and we'd taken pictures. So they featured in the newsletter. So that didn't really cost me anything. But who reads the, news, who reads the Junior Achievement newsletter? Other uh, businesses. So your really key is to focus on what you love and who's going to read it. Is that your market share? Okay. And, and I think you shared with us three or four very low-cost grassroots way, but whatever you pick, I think the key you're saying is do it consistently. Yes. Just don't do it once and say, oh, that didn't work, and then stop doing it. Yeah, no, people often want to pay for an advertising magazine like Rutschman's Magazine. They have specials all the time. You can't just do it one time and think, okay, why didn't it work? You can't do an email campaign once, postcard, and say, why didn't it work? People need to be touched seven times before they remember to contact you. And then they have to feel the pain. And that goes into the sales part of it. But what's their pain? What are you fixing? Why is paycheck so successful? Because I don't want to do payroll. I have no desire to figure out what taxes do and when it's due and paid on time. So paychecks, these, there's a pain, which is your payroll. They fix it. They fill that need. So when you're advertising, what need are you filling? Don't just talk about how great you are. Okay, we're all great. We're all love. Okay, I do a really good job cleaning. But what, what am I filling? What need? What pain am I feel, filling? What am I helping them with? For us, when we do advertising, we talk about the lack of toilet paper. It's a huge pain when you're in the bathroom and there's no toilet paper. Unfortunately, cleaning companies don't stock as much. So the pain we're filling is toilet paper. What's your pain that you're filling? That's what you need to advertise about. That's what you need to be consistent with. Perfect. So those are some great marketing ideas. Now let's make the, 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 um, you know, the transition to sales. So what is your sales process? Like how, where do you go to find new clients and how do you close more sales? I'm really lucky in that my clients love me. So they refer me to their friends. So half the sales are already done in the fact that I didn't have to sell myself my client sells me. I have a very wide range of clients who will then say to their friends, oh, I hate my cleaners, horrible. Oh, well, hey, use Midnight Janitorial, they're the best. So when I get that phone call, I'm already halfway there. They already like me, they already trust me. So when I'm walking through with them, I'm not picking apart the prior cleaning company. Nobody wants to be slammed. That's the worst thing you can do is, oh, look, they didn't do this, they didn't do this, don't do that. You wanna educate them. Give them some tips that they can use. For example, I would say to them, there's no MSDS book. You really need to have an MSDS book or you can get fined. Whether you go with me or somebody else, you may want to get one. So I'm offering them advice. As we're walking through, I'm educating them about who I am and how I treat my employees. We give them turkeys at Thanksgiving. We do summer parties. So I'm getting them to trust and like me and know me more than just, here's the facts, here's the facts, here's the facts. Nobody wants to be sold. I think that people talk about that, but they don't want that. They want to be educated. They want to come to know you and love you, and then they will do business with you. Perfect, perfect. So um, when when somebody says they, they are going to think about it or they just don't want to make a decision, do you have any advice on how to how to make that sales cycle a little bit faster yes. and get them to say yes or no? Because even no is okay. You just want to know. Yes. People love gifts. Think about Christmas. What do you love about Christmas? You get a gift. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we give them a handwritten thank you note saying thank you for taking your time to walk me through your facility. And then we give them a little gift. Maybe it's a chocolate covered apple. Okay. Or it's Godiva's. Not big box, just a little box. Okay. It's that second step of them seeing me again, them remembering me. How do I stand out? When you get a bid, you usually get a bid of five or six bids. 
Okay, well, they're all the same. They're all in front of you. You forgot the first person. You probably remember the last person. Same logic. The gift will sit on that desk. Every time they bite into that apple or that chocolate, who are they going to think of? Me. Love it. Love it. Okay, so... So tell me about, I mean, you seem to be very business savvy. What are some good business books you've read or you are reading right now? Well, of course I have to say Wisdom in a Traffic Jam is the best book. But in all seriousness, the first book I read was The E-Myth. My accountant gave it to me when I first started my business said, read this book. By Michael, um... I don't even know the, I just know the email. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. It's just, yeah. it's a real hardcore book that talks about not working on your business, but working, not working in your business, but working on your business. Those are some really great books. Good to Great, Duct Tape Marketing, The E-Myth, and Wisdom. Wonderful. So I know you're not a lady that actually um, sits still. So what are some new ventures you are involved in right now? Well, one of the things that we did was we, when we first started Midnight, it was just going to be cleaning. I never thought I was going to do anything else. A client came to me and said, can you give us these really obscure garbage bags? And I was like, hmm, I guess, why not? Well, eight years later, I decided that I was selling so much toilet paper and seed folds, and I went to the distributors and said, I want a better deal. And they said, sorry, can't give it to you. You're not a distributor. Well, you will learn, never tell me no. Telling me no makes me mad, makes me want to do more. So I started a distributorship. So now I have one stop janitorial and carpet supply. So I sell toilet paper. And I think any good business needs a good catchphrase. So when you pee, think of me, because I am your number one business for your number two business. <laughs> I think when you market, how are you memorable? This again goes back to being memorable. It may be kind of crass and saying the word pee is probably not the best, but when you're in that bathroom, there's no toilet paper, who are you going to think of? Me. Wonderful. And and I think we will think of you after that. So so thank you so much for your time. You're such a dynamic lady and you're making things happen and I love it. Love it. And and to me you are a Rochester rock star. So thank you so much. Thank Any you. last words of advice you have for an entrepreneur? I think especially as a woman, don't don't change for people. You are who you are and that's what will show through. Your personality, if you're a shy person, then be a shy person. Find other ways to get it out, get the word out there by yourself. If you're dynamic, be dynamic. It has to come from the heart. When you wake up every day, you have to know what you're doing today is going to make you happy because you're in this for the long haul. There's going to be days when you hate your business. Remember why you got started. It's because you loved being in business. And in the end, it'll work out. Great. Thank you so much. Thank and you. thank you for watching. Are you a Rochester rock star? Submit a line. Go to www.rochesterrockstars.com and I look forward to meeting you soon.